Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things Everton. Again, <laughs> David and uh, Max here, uh, and we're going to be uh, hearkening back to the past in another Remember Me segment. Uh, so, this guy is from Argentina. All right, he uh, came in 2011 on a uh, season long loan deal from Tigre in the Argentinian League. Six foot three striker. All right, uh, got his first goal against Fulham in the FA Cup. He got a, he got a, st- a standing ovation for his play in the 1 0 win over Man City. Uh, scored a. Scored the second goal against Blackpool in the FA Cup. Got his first Premier League goal against Chelsea. He was a cult hero due to his hard work and commitment. Uh, and right now, in 2017 and 2018, he's been on loan, uh, play, played for Tigre again. He's back there. He's played 14 games, had a couple yellow cards, no goals. Uh, I, I Most of you know who I'm talking about already. I am talking about Dennis Strachwellersi. The Strack. Uh, so, guys, tell me about the Strack because I was not following Everton that year. I when it like like you just like when you listed the goals, I, I was a bit gutted because I just I, I proper wanted to go into his goals. But the one thing I really noticed about Strack Willacy was the reaction from the crowd and the reaction from the man himself when he grabbed the goal. I know I, I remember the three goals very clearly. You know, they were all at Goodison. The um, the one against Fulham, he broke down in tears with my guy Guy on his shoulders, trying to follow him everywhere. Um, yeah, again, I, I remember his performance against Man City when Darren Gibson got that one nil goal, and again, he's just he had lungs of iron. The man would not stop running. He close everything down. He ch- he chase and he just would be relentless. Um, Again, the one against Blackpool, I think, I'm not going to say fluke, but I think it was um, it was a bit of a scruffy goal, but they, they all count, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, that Chelsea one it, it is a, from a game that's very fun to me. The uh, the 2-0 two nil, the, the two nil where Pienaar come back, Pienaar got the first goal and Strack got the second. Um, yeah, I just, uh, the, the, the reaction from the supporters, the man managed to get, you know, he... He was part of a very underwhelming summer transfer window. I remember that. We lost Mikel Arteta, much to my devastation. And we brought in Royston Drenter and Dennis Strachwellersi on low. And we were like, what the fuck have we just done? <laughs> and, um, but all in all, that season was probably my favourite season in football. Um, wow. Again, in the January, we went and got Nikita Jelovic and kind of made a better goal as the season got on. I think that was the season we kind of cost Manchester United the title. And um, yeah, I just I just remember that those performances and the ovations that Strachwell actually got because um, you just wouldn't have expected the fans in the way that he did. Mm. Uh, so I, I seem to remember more of the kind of laughter factor behind him. There's certainly an admiration for his work ethic, but yeah, I always remember he rugby tackled the player. I can't remember who that was against. <laughs> really, basically, he'd just been chasing shadows, and then on the last one, he just steamrolled him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, it was a strange one because he was just known to just run around like a madman for like the last 20 minutes of a game when he come on. But before that, I don't know if you got the stats there, Jerry. He, I'm sure he'd scored something like 40 goals. Or it might have been maybe, say, 20, 25, 30 in like the Argentinian Division Two League, so we were um, we were expecting we might get a little bit of a goal score. It didn't happen, um, but you know he did. He worked really hard, and he just he, he seemed to just go on and on. And he was he's quite tough, but I think we all knew we weren't getting more than a year yeah. out of him because um, he just it, it, when we when it comes down to he wasn't he wasn't good enough. He was, he was never Premier League level, but he's just one of these kind of obscure Everton players that. You know, get remembered for all the right reasons, just because of how hard they work, and you know, just the kind of spirit they have. And as I said, there was a bit of a laughter factor behind him, but you know, he did. He worked very hard, and you know, he had a good time here. I think, and I, 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 I remember seeing an interview not so long ago with him, and he, he talks very really fondly about his time in Everton. I think we were probably his marquee club mm-hmm. while he was on loan here of his career. 
that he'll always kind of look back on. So, yeah, nothing but fun memories. I remember that the one that stands out the most is the Chelsea goal because that was a big one. Um, so, yeah, I like them. So would you say that's your, your best strike moment is the Chelsea goal? No, I'd say it was the rugby tackle. I'd love to remember <laughs> who that was on. Um, if I can get a clip, I'll try. And, we'll try and put it in the the bio for people to have a look at if I can find it. But you definitely nailed someone. It was ruthless, but it was fantastic as well. Just summed them up. You know, he was doing, doing more stuff like that than actually scoring goals. But that was probably my best memory of him. Mm. So uh, Max, you mentioned a few there, and you said you mentioned a, two of them in particular, like. They were especially fond. Which one is your favorite? Um, I think it's got it's got to be that Chelsea goal because mm. um, the I think the performance in general was was very good, and just I remember the atmosphere of Goodison that day being particularly volatile and mm. uh, and, and what everything that Goodison should be really. And for him to, to score, kind of put the cherry on the top of the cake. And yeah, it, it, again, it's just a game that I remember very fondly. Probably more so for Pienaar than for the Strach. But um, yeah, he, he, he deserves a mention for that. So uh, we mentioned this off camera, but I'm going to ask again to where everybody else can hear. If you're explaining to someone like myself, Who's only, who hasn't been able to watch, was not able to watch this track live. I, I've had to look at YouTube videos to get an idea. I'm so mm. angry I didn't get to witness that, you know, when it was happening. Who would you compare him to in order to kind of communicate to me, like, how he played and his relationship with fans and everything? I, I said, that in, my, in my opinion anyway, uh, there's, only, there's really only one man that you could compare him to, and that's who Manny has. The man could not control a thing. It was one of the dodgiest first touches I've ever seen on a footballer. Yeah, his work ethic and it and his just desire to play for Everton was, was apparent. And it was he was just one of those lads you could you had nothing but ad, admiration for him. Yeah, I um, I couldn't I couldn't relate to Nias one at first because. Nias has kind of built himself into a, a mm. genuine spot player these last few months, but certainly, you know, that kind of Nias September, October time when he, he come back from the dead almost, definitely, you know, people were laughing their head off when he, when he seen Nias, he like running at people, ball bouncing off his shins, and <laughs> that's exactly what Strackle was, he was, you know, it was just, it was bouncing off him, and he chased the ball down, he was never getting there, but everyone was like, oh, God! <laughs> Yeah, we're all getting up. He was never going to do anything, but it was just, you know, it was just that kind of fun factor watching him. And um, it's one of those plays that, as I said, they'll never be remembered as a great, but they'll always be remembered. So, uh, anything else to add about this guy? Do you guys remember anything about like what he was like, like in interviews with the public, anything at all? I don't Speaking. think his English was his English was awful, wasn't it? So I think that just kind of endeared them to us even more. Yeah, you know, there was the commu the communication barrier was there. Yet you could yeah. see how much he loved he loved us, and you know, I've always got a you know a lot of admiration for players. I'm sure he kissed kissed the badge after he yeah. scored. Kissed the badge against Fulham, you know, pointing to the sky, crying, and you know, you just yeah. you know, again, I uh, just echo what David said. It really is kind of the the marquee club that he's played for. Look out for this. Um... Piece in one of the. I'm pretty sure if you Google there's him and Everton, you'll find it's only 12 months old. Or and um, have a read. It's a good uh, interview with him. Yeah, I guess that is that's it for Remember Me, the Strack. Right. Uh, so if you like the videos, please subscribe. We're nearing 500, and you could be number 500. There's nothing in it for you other than pride. That's about it. Check out uh, Max's stuff on the Toffee Blues website. You can also find some of David's stuff on there as well. Uh, he also has some stuff appearing in the Sportsman as well. So, I guess that's all. We have more on the agenda. So, bye. <laughs>